것처럼 생긴 걸 Hello, 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 and welcome back to yet another video on language learning. My name is Emma, and in this video, I'd like to show you how I go about using one piece of reading material in a couple of different ways to aid in my language learning process. The four steps are, first, to pick an appropriate reading material, second, to read it aloud, third, is to copy it out word for word on paper, and last but not least, is to type it out word for word on some sort of device. So. Pick a book, any book, and let's get started. So my overarching approach to language learning, which you'll probably find across this channel, is that I like to use the same piece of learning material in a couple of different ways. I do a couple of different activities with it, each helping me develop a slightly different skill. And what this allows me to do is one, have built-in repetition because I'm using the same material over and over again, but also two, because each activity is aimed at a slightly different skill. I keep myself entertained. I find it fun, which I still think is the key to being consistent to any sort of language learning. So first order of business, we have to choose some sort of reading material. If you have a favorite novel, you can go for that. Maybe you like a piece of news, we can use that as well. Personally, my target language is Korean and my level is probably a lower intermediate learner. So as for this stage in my learning process, I still very much prefer graded readers because they're just a little bit more tailored and designed to aid the overall learning process. But I guess graded readers aren't just for beginners. Um, there are graded readers available from beginner through intermediate and advanced levels as well. And I think that's going to be what I'm going to stick with throughout my learning journey. Step two is to read your material aloud. You can do it once, you can do it twice. You can do it until you're satisfied with how you're reading it aloud. 옛날 옛날에 사이 좋은 부부가 있었어요. 어느 날 남편이 일 때문에 장에 가게 됐어요. 부인, 내일 장에 가는데 필요한 게 있어요? 그럼 머리핏 하나만 사다가 주세요. The first obvious benefit is that it helps you practice your pronunciation. And especially if you're an auditory learner, which means that you learn by listening, um, reading aloud helps you learn the material in two ways at the same time. First, by looking at the letters, and second of all, through hearing your own voice reading the material out loud. For me, with learning Korean, a lot of the times I look at Korean characters, and unless I actively decide to decode them and get meaning out of them, they just kind of look like a series of lines and circles, kind of like Morse code, having it not mean anything to me. And once I read it out loud, I can associate meaning with what I'm hearing instead of what I'm looking at. So at this stage, when you're just reading it aloud, don't worry too much about the new vocab, but more so just focus on your pronunciation. And then after you've reread it a couple times, either aloud or in your head, you'll start to be able to develop a sense of what the word could potentially be, what it could mean just through context. And it is very helpful to do this before you jump straight into using a dictionary. 아니, 장에서 머리핏을 사오라고 했는데 왜 젊은 여자를 데리고 왔어요? Step 3 is to write it all out, word for word, with a pen or pencil, on a piece of paper. At this point, I will go ahead and search up the definition of any new words. I'll circle them in a different colored pen, and then I'll write out their meaning or translation in a language that I feel has the closest meaning to that word in Korean. For me, sometimes that's a word in English, sometimes in Vietnamese. First off, this allows you to practice your handwriting to make sure that it is legible, at least for you, right? And second of all, you also get to practice your spelling. I have found that for me, a lot of the times I will pick up words here and there that I will use in speaking quite often. But when it comes to writing it out, I have no clue how it is spelt. You have to slow down a lot when you're writing, right? This naturally gives you more time to ponder what you're reading and analyze it a little bit more. Like, why did they choose a certain word pairing or collocation or verb to express this certain idea? or use this particular verb tense to express a certain nuance or level of respect. 
especially with Korean where the sentence logic is pretty much flipped compared to other languages that I use, let's say English. It is very useful for me to slow down and kind of take time to understand how the sentence logic is written, how it is played out in Korean. For example, um, there are words in Korean that I thought were verbs the entire time, but they were in fact adjectives. And I realized this through this writing process. For instance, I went to Taiwan last year and I might say, I miss Taiwan. In English, to miss is a verb. In Korean, the sentence would be, 저는 대만이 그리워요. But 그립다 is actually an adjective, not a verb, which would affect the, I guess, topic or subject marker that you're using for that sentence. This is not the only occasion that I have mistaken verbs for adjectives or vice versa, because I guess I'm still translating sentences from Korean over to English in my head, which I'm trying to get better at and not do so much. But because I still do this, um, mistakes like these still happen. So this is a great way for me to catch my own mistakes in my learning process. I started off with really short passages, only about like a couple paragraphs long, and then they got progressively longer and longer to about half a page. And then eventually one whole page like this, and eventually two pages. And I feel like this progression makes sense. As the proficiency in your target language increases, you'll also want to be practicing with longer passages, writing more, practicing your spelling a bit more. So it's kind of all built in into this whole process. Step number four is to use all your 10 fingers and touch type your material out onto any device of your choice. As you can see, this is yet another round of repeating with the same material, but this time, instead of practicing our handwriting, we're practicing our typing skills. Sometimes I type while looking at the original PDF, and sometimes I would type out from the version that I had handwritten earlier on just to make sure that my handwriting is legible for me. And if I can't read my own handwriting, then we have a problem, right? If there is that problem, I will make a note of that and be a little bit more careful with my handwriting when the next handwriting session rolls around. Once again, as you're typing, you'll be actively aware of how the words are spelled one more time. The main theme here is repetition, but in slightly different ways than that, you stay entertained. At this stage, after already handwriting it out earlier, you probably understand more words, but inevitably there are still going to be words that you don't remember the meaning to. I will still go ahead and highlight them, type out their meaning, just as another round of reminders for myself. So typing like this on a weekly basis is a great way for you to practice a skill, which will definitely come in handy later if you plan on getting fluent in this language and using it a little bit more than just for everyday texting. I go in a lot more detail on how I learned to type Korean in this video over here if you wanna check that out. I know I only said four steps, but here is a bonus step for those of you who want to take it a little further. And that would be to translate the text from your target language into a language that you're already fluent in and then back into your target language and see if the versions match up. Personally, I have not done this yet because it feels like a lot of work, a lot of brain power to be invested, but I have seen it to be very useful for people in their language learning journey or simply to just understand a piece of text a little bit better. So if you do end up giving it a shot, be sure to let me know how it goes for you. Quick recap, first step, is to choose an appropriate book for your learning. For me, I enjoy graded readers, but you can go ahead and use your favorite novel or news, or you can get creative with it as well and use other types of reading material. Second of all, you wanna read it aloud or in your head a couple times to practice your pronunciation and deciphering new words in context. Third is to handwrite it out word for word, and this allows you to practice your handwriting, your spelling, your sense of the language, the sentence logic, all good things. Step number four is to type it all out on your laptop to practice your, your touch typing skills, and also to practice that vocab all over again. 
I generally do this with one piece of reading material per week. And then on top of that, I do read other things as well, but I only read it aloud and in my head, but I don't do this entire process with it. You can definitely pick and choose which steps you want to incorporate into your learning schedule because it is important to make it work for you. Actually, I don't usually go back and revise the vocab lists that I've made earlier, mostly because it feels a little bit tedious and also because I've done reruns on lists of words before. I would remember those words in the first couple weeks that I'm learning it, but once I move on to something new and those words don't really reappear in my life anymore in any other content that I'm consuming, then I forget those words pretty quickly. I mean, simply through this process, I'm already rereading and relearning the same word, the same material at least three times, right? That's a lot of built-in repetition. So instead of going back through those vocab lists, I will just watch or read other material, either that be interviews or podcasts or whichever it might be that week. But yeah, words that are often used will naturally surface a lot in the other content that I'm watching. And through that, I will learn the same words over and over again in slightly different contexts and build out a more well-rounded understanding for that concept or word in their respective contexts and not just pure memorization. If you have your own method of how you go about studying with reading material or if you end up giving this method a shot, I'd be very curious of how it goes for you so be sure to let me know about it in the comments down below. Anyways, thank you for watching and as always you guys have a lovely week and I'll see you very soon. Bye! Mm -hmm.